What's in the box? Hi, I'm Mike from Epic Duck Studios, and welcome to What's in the Box, the hobby show that Brad Pitt can't shut up about. Today, Age of Sigmar. You knew this one was coming. We're gonna open the box, go through the contents, and then I'm actually gonna build one model as well, just to give you a feel for the quality and the ease of putting this kit together. Welcome to it. All right, so there we've got the box, and it is, you know, the same size as any other GW starter kit box, Dark Vengeance, uh, Salt on Black Reach, etc. Nice and heavy, you can hear a lot of pieces in there already. Let's go ahead and uh, break the seal on this bad boy. There are a lot of miniatures in this kit. Like, there's 47 minis in here. When you figure this is about 150 Canadian, uh, what, 120 US, I think, in that ballpark. That's like 250 to three bucks a miniature, which is, it's just a good value. Oh good, uh, the whippy sticks are back. GW whippy sticks. All right, big bag of bases, nothing really to go over there. They're bases. Okay, I'm just gonna move the box out of the way and we're gonna go through these frames one at a time. So this frame is just, this is frame one and it's just loaded with stuff. Uh, I'm gonna zoom the camera in here. Okay, so the first frame here, you can see we've got, what, one, two, three, four bodies for uh, Sigmarites. And another, at least one, there's a torso here, and a torso here, a torso here, torso here. Are they, okay, yeah, the torsos cover up the front. So, yeah, we've got a load of guys just on this side. This is clearly, you know, good guys, bad guys, the way this is framed out. Um, definitely a lot of very static posed, um, Everything in here is a static pose. Let's just get that out of the way right now. As with most GW starter kits, pretty much everything's going to be mono pose, which is fine. You know, if you're a converter, that's not going to bother you, and if you're not, it's probably not also going to bother you. You know, all the corn guys, very similar to Dark Vengeance with the cultists. You really can't do anything except for field them exactly the way they come. But there's really nothing wrong with that, especially in a starter kit. That's how you get the value out of it. That's how you get down to the 250 miniature by having it just be three pieces of plastic instead of eight. So I understand why they're doing it. And if you're a converter, you're not gonna care. You're gonna bash it up, fill it with some green stuff and do what you want anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and set these aside. We're gonna go through the next couple frames and then I'm gonna pick one or two miniatures just to go ahead and build. All right, second frame here. Now, slightly concerned, you can actually see some warping in the frame already. Now, there's nothing in here that's really going to be bothered by that, but if it were a vehicle kit, that kind of warping would make assembling the vehicles really bad. Anyone who's put together an old Tau Piranha or an old Necron Monolith will know exactly what this kind of warping meant on assembly, but I don't think it's going to matter whatsoever with these models. So here we've got... I forgot his name already. Good guy boss. Lord Celestin, something like that. Uh, some really just awesomely detailed pieces. Like, if you can see this piece of armor here, it's just... I don't know if you can really see that on the camera or not. It's got sort of like an ingrained lion face in it, and it's just really, really well done. It's, they're very good pieces. The large banner of corn over here. I love the aesthetic to it. I'm not a fanboy here. You know, I'm really a big fan of uh, Privateer Press models. I'm really getting into weird models as well. And as you know, I'll basically paint anything I like the look of. But just as a starter kit goes, I'm really, really happy with the quality of these pieces so far. Once we uh, go to assemble something, we'll see how good or how bad the mold lines are. Okay, we still have uh, three frames to go. This one looks like it could actually be a repeat of that first frame. I'm gonna just grab that and double check. And yep, that is an identical frame, that's fine. You know, again, it's a starter set, we expect that to happen. So here we've got, you know, a few more pieces for some Sigmarites. Actually, that's this whole frame is Sigmarites. Yeah, the entire frame, which is awesome. Um, again, they're pretty much monopose. Looks like you might have some choice in how the arms go on, but I won't really know that until we get there. Here you can see, it's the way they manage to make these compound kits now. The shoulder pad and sort of the forearm are one piece, and then the elbow kind of goes in between. All right, put that aside. There's our last frame. This should have, yeah, the really big, basically it's a hell brute that's not half machine. It's whatever, you know, just straight up demon of corn is. So that's all over here. It's basically like this whole half of this frame is just that one guy. We've got what I assume are handlers for him. We've got this guy with, you know, the large flail and so on. Again, just really good looking kit. A lot of corn detail here. If you weren't playing corn, it might be a challenge to try and convert these into something else. And you see like they're basically all these giant corn heads. The beast itself, I mean, it's got a corn emblem basically taking up its entire chest. 
So if you weren't playing corn, if you were trying to convert this into a different chaos god, you're definitely going to be uh, exercising your green stuff for skills. And that's okay if that's what you're looking at. That's fine. All right, here we've got one of the new base sizes, some sort of medium oval. You can definitely see this one being really handy for a lot of uh, 40K pieces as well. Like that's a perfect bike base right there. And I hope that these become available in bulk sometime. I may have to run off something similar and cast them in the future for myself and for everyone else. Oh, there's a second one of those in here as well. I think that's just a regular 60 mil. Yeah, 2002 print, that's gonna be 60 millimeter. And of course the regular bag o GW dice that Probably don't roll really well. Let's give them a shot. All right, how do we do? Two sixes, five, five, four, four, three, two, two, one, 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 two. That's almost a perfect average. Okay, I take it back. These dice might be okay. Could use one more three in them. They roll on the low side. One single roll is indicative of how they work. Oh man, look at all those ones. Oh my God, these dice are awful. Look, 12 dice and seven ones. Come on. Uh, actually, a very small transfer sheet in here. And I mean, a very small transfer sheet. Sigmar, double tail comets, and some other symbols. Nothing uh, too fancy, but if you don't like freehanding, transfer sheets are the way to go. Oh, sorry, there's two of those. And then the book. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, pop the shrink wrap off here. And assembly instructions on the back. I don't mind if I cut that a little bit, because that's not really too important. All right, I'm not gonna spend too much time going through the book here because I'm sure there's a hundred other people who have made that video already. But here we've got our Stormcast Eternals and Warbands of Corn, Lord Celestin. But I mean, that is, you know, for a starter kit model, you're looking at what, 20 piece starter kit model? That's pretty awesome. Continue flipping through the instructions here. Oh, wait, what was this big guy's name? Korgoraths. Well, that's much better than Hellbrute, I guess. I don't know. Korgorath Bloodstoker. Bloodstoker. Yep, he's a Bloodstoker. Yep. You can pretty much throw any kind of action with the word blood. Blood Reaver. Like, you know, make my point, right? All right, so let's uh, just flip through the book here really quick. Oh, there's a second. Yeah, so the four-page rule book, you know, the hotly contested four-page rule book. It's there. And yeah, it's like gorgeous, gorgeous photos of the models. Just, you know, they look good. They look good. Say what you want about the game changing. The models look good. Like, this is just, this is a pretty book. I'm going to probably read this later. I'm not going to worry about it right now. And I'm sure most of us have seen it online already anyways, but it's just beautiful. Yep. Going on and going on. Storm made flesh. Yep. All right. I'm not going to go through the rest of the book. It's, it's pretty. It's a pretty book. Uh, this guy's face, maybe not so much. I need some skin, yo. Anyway. All right. Let's grab, let's pick something and build it. So I'm just gonna grab the original assembly instructions again. All right, we're gonna go with the prosecutor. We're gonna build a prosecutor here on camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and find his frame, which I'm gonna guess is the one we had a duplicate of. B17, okay, so that's who we're starting with. This prosecutor right here. There's P17 right there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just gonna clip these free from the sprue. I like to clip wide. All right, so there's 17. I'm looking for 19, which is right here. Just personal preference, but I do like to clip away from the model and then cut those little pieces off after. B18, which is just kind of a floating leg. Here we go. All right, one thing I'm liking so far, if you've built a lot of GW kits, you might remember that in some older kits, Numbers are not in any way related to each other on the frame. You know, you'd have 17 here, and 18 here, and 19 two frames over. These actually look like there's a little semblance of some order to them. I may take that back later, but so far I've found every piece I'm looking for relatively close by. Uh, 22 and 23 are both right here. Let's grab them. 
There's a lot of little details here. I just want to make sure I don't accidentally clip something off. These little like lightning strokes, I can see being very, very easy to accidentally clip away. I think they've changed their injection process a little bit, just because that's a lot of tiny clips. And it used to be piece like this would have like four contact points, and that was eight. Okay, still looking for 21 and 20 for his arms. Okay, there's 21 and 20, both right here in the corner. Yeah, it looks like all the pieces for this guy. Let's put that aside, and it tells you right here which size base to use, which of course doesn't actually matter in this edition of the game. And this does come... But we'll grab a 40 for them. We'll, you know, do what it says. So there's a 40 mil. There are a lot of the new 32s in here as well. Alright, so let's go ahead and we'll clean that one up and get that assembled. I'm going to grab just this piece of foam here just to back everything against. Alright, so I'm just going to clean up when I clip those pieces off. I don't like to put a lot of stress on the model when I'm clipping it, so you know, I tend to leave little pieces like that behind because they won't cause any breakage if you clip them off like that, but if you try and clip in really close, it can distort the frame and sometimes damage other pieces on the frame. Yeah, there's definitely something reminiscent of uh, Space Marines with these models. No, everyone's pointed that out, but let's join the bandwagon here. All right, let's get this piece. There we go. So then we'll do a second pass with the X-Acto knife just to clean these up. I'm not really seeing anything in the way of mold flash that needs to be taken care of, which I'm really liking that. Let's get the base out of here for a minute. Yeah, there's one more. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, we're just gonna clean this up the X-Acto knife and then get it built. Yeah, it's really nothing in the way of mold lines to clean up. Mostly just the little bits from taking it off the frame. So you can see right in here, it would have been really easy to, you know, actually damage the model taking it off the frame here. Just little things to be cautious of. Especially with these starter kits, they really, you know, any densely packed kit is harder to get off the frame and these GW clippers aren't always the best tool for getting things off the frame. Actually using an X-Acto knife to cut away a piece can be more efficient or more safe. Maybe not safer for you, but safer for the pieces. One other thing I'd like to mention, uh, just a safety concern. You'll see I cut a lot towards myself like this with my thumb in the way. As a rule, you shouldn't be doing that. Cutting towards yourself is a good way to cut yourself, period. It's a good way to cause an injury. When I was very young though, my grandfather taught me how to whittle. And that was actually almost one of my first introductions to a hobby. My grandfather taught me to whittle and we practiced with a pocket knife and bars of soap. So actually a little bit of a mold line here across the top of the hammer, nothing bad. Comes off really quickly. It's not mold line free. It wouldn't have mattered too much. If you're trying to paint these tabletop standard, you wouldn't even care. It's really small. You just wouldn't even make a note of it. Um, but anyway, my grandfather taught me to whittle when I was very young. And part of whittling is cutting the wood in this sort of like scooping fashion towards your thumb. And what you do is you actually cut your thumb over and over and over again, which is a strange thing for, you know, five or six year old boy to be doing. But you build up a callus doing it that way. And it's part of the way that hobby works, or at least the way my grandfather taught me. I'm not going to pretend he was a professional or I ever would be a professional whittler. It's the way I was taught at a very, very young age that that's how you handle a knife and that's how you cut things. It's just something that's always stuck with me. I know it's unsafe, especially with an X-Acto knife, which is quite sharp. And I know I shouldn't be doing that but I do just because it's such an old habit and I'm so familiar with it. So I'm asking you, if you're watching this, if you're learning to cut, if you're learning to whittle, if you're learning to do this hobby for the first time, make an effort to learn to cut away. Make an effort to cut like this. Make an effort to learn to be safe, to do things well. I'm not saying I'm doing this poorly, I'm saying I'm doing it with a degree of unsafety that isn't necessary, but it's just so familiar to me. It's such an ingrained bit of knowledge in me that it feels unnatural doing this any other way to me. As a result, I probably cut my thumb about once a week, and sometimes quite deeply. Uh, right now it's actually in really good shape, there's no scars or anything there. It's something I'm always conscious of and something I do on a fairly regular basis. If you can avoid that habit, if you can build better habits than I have, please do so. End of public service announcement. You can see here we've been, I don't know, cleaning this model for four minutes and we're just about done. Mold lines are really insignificant on this piece. 
I'm gonna say the only place it really was even noticeable is across the top of those hammers. Go ahead and just clean that up. Mostly it's a problem right where you clip it off the frame. And that's gonna be true of almost any mini. Two pieces to go, then we'll get a build done here. So he's armed with a knife, because you know, two hammers isn't enough. Make sure you carry a small knife or a very tiny sword as well. Hammers are fine, but make sure you've got a knife. It's really hard to stab someone in the back with a hammer. Or cut a steak for that matter. And cutting steak is a very important task. I'm really impressed. There's not a mold line like running all the way down these. There could be, and it would be very forgivable, but there's not, and that's awesome. There's just the tiny little nubs where, you know, we took it off the frame. Oh, I'm cutting really deep there. Let's stop that. All right, my blade cut in just a little bit there. You don't want to do that. You want to avoid that whenever you can. Um, that's why I should have been doing it, you know, Whittler style, and I didn't. And the model just paid for it. Again, just reinforcing why I have this bad habit. So I tried to do it well, and I almost broke the model instead. Like, that piece may end up breaking off. Where it broke away from the mold, you'll get this sometimes. You get a little cavity. When the piece of the frame breaks, it takes a little bit of this with it. I might hit that with a tiny nub of green stuff and just fill that in, but I'm going to mostly paint these to a tabletop standard. You're not going to notice that by the time we're done assembly. If you're doing something more elaborate with it, you'd want to pay attention to it. Uh, one thing a lot of people don't notice is flash on their bases. You'll get it along this bottom edge, and there's quite a bit of it, and it actually makes the model kind of stick on the table sometimes. So this is just me being really, really picky, but I like to just scrape all the way along the bottom edge. And you can see there's quite a bit coming off. Um, what it does is it gives you a smoother edge instead of having that bit of a sharp edge there, and it means the models are less likely to catch. And if you're working with a table where it's got some texture to it, like someone sanded their table, this little edge here can actually like get caught in the sand and make your models fall over. Now with this being a plastic model, it doesn't matter so much. But when I spend you know, 17 hours painting a metal model, if it takes me an extra 30 seconds here to make the base safer to keep it from chipping the model, I'm absolutely going to do that. This is you know the extreme hobbyist coming out. I don't expect everyone to do this. Right, but we're almost there. Let's say it's about 30 seconds of base. You see, that base just slides all over the table, no problem. It's got a nice beveled edge on the bottom now. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but it just makes it a little bit nicer to pick up and hold. If you go to push it, it'll slide a little bit better. Just little things like that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and actually put this guy together now. I'm gonna be using Plastruck Plastic Weld, just a basic um, plastic cement, melts the two pieces, sticks them together. So we're gonna start by attaching, you know, his chest to the rest of him. And that just comes in like so. I like the trial fit pieces, just make sure they fit like that. Just brush on a little bit of the glue. I'm going to slide that in, give it a little squeeze that kind of just helps cement the two together. Done. I'm going to also attach this to the base while we're at it. And to do that, I'm also going to put just a little bit on the base itself. You can see it evaporating almost right away, but that's all right. Okay, so that's done. Then we're going to go ahead and attach his other leg. That's the one with the knife here. I'm going to go ahead and just apply the glue to this side. This one's got a pretty obvious contact point once you look at it. All right, put that aside for a second. We'll build this backpack, which is just the two pieces. It's literally just this wing gluing onto this side, and that is a really small contact point. Holy cow. Get a little glue in there. And that's done. Leave that to dry for a minute. We want to be very careful of that because it was such a small contact point. Let's go ahead and get this guy's arms on in the meantime. So one hand over here. Um, there's a little tiny lip here which pretty much guides it to be a perfect match. Dab a glue here. And just, you know, rotate it till it fits tightly. And that's that. And the same thing with the other arm. Now this one includes a big shoulder pad as well, so I'm going to just trial fit it and see if it gives us any extra contact for gluing. And it really doesn't. Okay. Alright, so just glue on there. And 
just kind of wiggle it until it feels like it's in the right spot. All right, and last we just have to attach his wings to his back. And that, so you see there's a little bit of like a crest that goes with it. It actually goes onto his helmet. We'll make sure we line this all up. And that's pretty straightforward. So what we're gonna do is put a tiny, tiny bit of glue right there. And we'll be very careful. We don't wanna accidentally wipe away any detail. Remember, plastic glue does melt the plastic. So it's possible to accidentally use it as an eraser and blot away part of your model. And just hold that for a couple seconds. You see this other wing is still just a little bit loose. Might have made more sense to build something else and move on. Quick, easy build, really no mold lines to clean up whatsoever. One little mistake on my part here, just digging in with the blade. But there's our first Prosecutor fully built. Gorgeous model, absolutely love this. It's just, it's a great looking model. I don't know if I really care for the rule changes. I'm not gonna get into that debate. Anyone who knows me knows I didn't really play a lot of fantasy in the first place. So I'm not gonna be missing a whole lot. What I do love are these models. These are fantastic looking models. Very dynamic poses. This wouldn't have fit into fantasy before. You couldn't have done this in a rank and file game. Not without giving it a whole lot of special rules or really limiting the pose here. And I just, I feel like this has sort of allowed them to be more creative with their posing and their uh, just their sculpts in general. So let's just quickly review what was in the box. You know, five full frames here. Five frames of miniatures, just a load of miniatures. The, uh, all the assembly instructions, the four pages of rules, which again, these are free now, so meh. But I like having printed copies. And just the absolutely gorgeous book here. Oh, didn't even get far enough to know this. There's actually different color schemes suggested back in here. So for both corn and the Sigmarines, Sigmarites, whatever you want to call them. Gorgeous book though, really just looks good. All right, let's give these dice one last roll. Let's see how they're doing. Remember we had, what was it, seven ones last time? All right, one, one, two, three, three, four, 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 five, six, six. Yeah, it's a little better than average. Definitely better than seven ones. The dice are not the important part of the kit. I'm just goofing around here. All right, so that is what's in the box, Age of Sigmar. Thanks for watching. Keep tuned for more unboxing videos, more hobby videos, painting tutorials, and of course, I actually play games sometimes. Also, don't forget to check out the other members of the Tabletop Media Co-op, Ash Barker from Gorilla Miniature Games, and Owen, Gaming with the Cooler, who both do a lot more game playing than I do, but way less hobby. I need to sign off.